Hello, Assalamualaikum guys and welcome to a new happy video. So, in this happy video, I will tell you about the basic things you will need to build a hacking torch. So basically, it's in a basic hardware requirement you need for your hacking torch. So the most important hardware piece of hardware you need for a hacking torch is motherboard. After the motherboard, everything can be solved. If you got a compatible motherboard, there are 99% chances you're gonna get you're gonna get a compatible hacking torch, and with about 80 to 90% of the stuff working almost perfectly. So let's start with motherboards. So right now I will open a link and uh, this is the Tony Mac website and I will let you know about some of the available motherboards if you're going to buy new ones for your Hackintosh and after this if you will I will tell about those who are ha currently have an older motherboard and want to get their Hackintosh working I will tell you about that as well so here is the list these are the motherboards which are very highly uh, compatible with Hackintosh and let me tell you one thing on this side it's it gonna be almost all of the Gigabyte motherboard I don't think they have put any other company as well but Gigabyte Asus give the most Gigabyte give the most compatibility than Asus Asus uh, motherboard, motherboards work almost perfectly but they got little uh, harder to settle with uh, compared to Gigabyte and then MSI and ASRock and here you can see that the there are now new graphical uh, new motherboard will not support the fifth generation of CPU I think please note these motherboard will not work with the older socket 1150 CPUs and may require latest BIOS for fifth generation CPUs but, all right now let's move forward and on the top of the list there is gaz 97 d 3 h gigabyte motherboard ga means gigabyte z97 is the chipset name and d3 is uh, display 3 and hd which means it's gonna have three display which can support up to hd and same is for all these motherboard and they have tell about the audio codec and form factor and size and you can see right now we're going from gigabyte and now we shift to asus asus z97 dualx nfs and i think they have messed up the one i'm using asus z97 pro gamer asus z97 pro gamer x are all com also compatible and i have almost everything working on my hackintosh including sleep to wake ethernet audio front usb port back usb port usb 3.0 and all the stuff which is available on my motherboard is working with the hackintosh correctly and we go down 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 and we see all the high tech motherboards are compatible with our hackintosh and uh, one of the most important thing for hackintosh is as well if you're going to have a uefi motherboard then you must have a sense of confidence that it gonna work oh, about 85 to 95 percent chances if you are using a uefi motherboard you're gonna get your hackintosh working on this side they have not told about any x99 chipset and which means they don't recommend to buy an x99 chipset for a hackintosh because apple does not have an x99 chipset iMac, MacBook, MacBook Pro, Mac Pro, or any other of their Mac systems. So, for x99 chipset to work perfectly, you need to patch their kernel, and they can get a little messy for the beginners. And you might have to wait for any latest updates and so on. So, that's a little downfall for Hackintosh or for a person who's having an x99 chipset. For their Hackintosh, and as we all know, X99 chipset is really powerful compared to Z97 chipset. And all the motherboard you're gonna see here are Z97, H97, H87, and all. And I think they have uh, listed about the latest one, uh, H87, H85, H81 are also compatible with Hackintosh. And about 
X99 chipset and, and uh, I think it's called H79 chipset. They are also compatible, but you still need to get little patching done for the to work. So now we, uh, after this, I think we will move to CPUs, which are more important than graphics card. As we all know that all of the Macs came with a built-in uh, graphics card, and uh, so because we have a, a built-in graphic card in Intel, so that's why any of the Intel Core i generation will work, which means Core i3, Core i5, and Core i7 from first generation to fourth generation are compatible with your Hackintosh. Intel Pentiums are compatible, I think, and Core 2 Duos systems are compatible. Core 2 Quad systems are compatible. If you get a compatible motherboard, then that's 100% sure sh uh, that you are having a compatible CPU. And as a basic note, for those who had just reached to the installer, installer, then there are 99% chances they can get to the OS X. Uh, normally like they can boot into us X if they uh, they got successful in booting to to the installer and on the top of the list we got a four core eight threads turbo unlocked overclock uh, overclockable core i7 4790k and you can buy it on Amazon and rest you got all the core i you can see there are almost all the core i core i5 and core i7 like core generation and now we got the latest 6th generation chipset, 5th generation, they have like 6th generation of CPUs compatible as well, which include i7, 5775C and other. If you have another uh, Broadwell CPU that can be compatible as well. CPU cooler does not, does not matter. After uh, motherboard and CPU, the most, most important thing is graphics as well. Graphics cards are the most important thing for your Hackintosh, and we will move to graphics card. <coughs> sorry, sorry, sorry for the coughing. And let's open the graphics card area. These graphic card are compatible with your Hackintosh until unless they are not on Maxwell. Maxwell graphics card are compatible with your Hackintosh, but they are not compatible out of the box. Out of the box means if you plug and and try to run your OS X, it will not work. It's it kind of not plug and play because other uh, series of G Nvidia graphics card are plug and play compatible, and some of the NV uh, AMD and Radeon are also plug and play compatible. So on the top of the list, we got. Uh, Vega GT740 super clock and if it's not on Maxwell it is compatible out of the box any motherboard which is not on Maxwell there are really high chances that it is compatible out of the box Nvidia GTX 600 series 500 series are compatible out of the box with your Hackintosh and like 110% they are compatible you don't need to install any driver to get them working on any model of OS X, I think above 10.6, 10.6.0 of OS X. Then you got many models. Then we got a Vega GTX 960 and so on. If you want to use a high-end graphic card like such as Titan and GTX 980, then it is highly recommended that you get a low-budget, low-price CPU uh, GPU just for installing the. Uh, just for installing OS X on your Hackintosh, like if you can get a uh, GTX 640, 630 for as a separate card, and it might help you support two more displays, and you can do all your crunching, data crunching, and rendering on your GTX 980. But uh, you can use your GTX 630 just to install a Hackintosh, so you don't need to swipe your graphic card in and out every time. And you can see they have mentioned till GTX, uh, Avaga GTX Titan. So you can get all these graphic cards. I don't know why they don't mention about GTX 650 series and 650, 660, 670, and all the 600 and 500 series because they are compatible. That doesn't mean they are low quality. You should not mention them on the website. But still, uh, it's their website. No argues. I'm trying to like tell you everything 
every single card you can use to install your hack and dodge after this i will let you know that uh the built-in gpus which means the built-in intel gpus which are compatible with your hack and dodge are intel hd 3000 intel hd 4000 and 4400 is compatible with the hack and dodge but you can't get full acceleration that easily you can get full acceleration of intel hd 3000 and all the 3000 series you can get full acceleration on intel hd 4600 which is mine and it's pretty working perfectly 4600 you can get on 5000 5300 5600 intel hd they will work like charm you won't need to do any hot work to get them working in terms of rams and coolers and hard drives and almost every ram work with your hack and touch almost every hard drive every ssd work with your hack and touch and if you're using a non apple hard drive a non apple ssd you need to patch it to get your uh trim working get your trim to work and right now i'm using chamele uh chameleon trimmer i think where it goes bro Mm, I don't know where it goes, but that uh, does the work. It's really, really easy to patch your hard drive to get trim working on your SSD, not the hard drive. I think they both are storage devices, so I'd call it hard drives. And after this comes uh, the turn of Bluetooth and your Wi Fi. The hardest thing to get working on your uh, Hackintosh is Wi-Fi and then after Wi-Fi uh, there is nothing harder to get start working with rather than, uh, sorry for my English just a little messed up there is no, nothing harder to get working than Wi-Fi and Bluetooth works mostly out of the box and you can use a little USB to get it working and the best thing <coughs> for your Hackintosh to get full of the osx charm uh, like hands off and other stuff you can get a custom build a board uh, custom build wi-fi adopter and uh, from the company of let me remember the name i just forgot the name yeah broadcom you can get a wi-fi device and most of the devices are just taken out from imax and mac Pro, so you can just plug and play and get the stuff working and it will work out of the box and you will get your hands off working and low energy supported and all the sharing stuff and air airplay airdrop and all the crazy stuff at osx provides you and the compatibility to synchronize your iphones and macs and ipads with your basic main system and that that is really easy if you can buy the hardware but if you want to get your usb working your Wi-Fi USB working. I had already uploaded one tutorial on how to get your Wi-Fi USB dongle to work on OS X and right now I'm using a Wi-Fi dongle as well for Wi-Fi and you can see the signal bar top here. They are not connected because I'm using right LAN but the device is not connected that's why. And Bluetooth Bluetooth work really easy and right now I'm using a USB 3. Point, uh, Bluetooth 3.0 and I don't use hands off because I don't use iPhone and iPads. I just use Bluetooth for data transfer. And this Bluetooth device does not work on my Windows that perfectly, that, uh, that good way that it works on my Hackintosh. Like, I don't need to install any drivers. And on my Windows 10, it's like hell of a difficult task to get my Bluetooth working on my Windows 10. And I just hate it. And the best thing I love about OS X is the ease of connectivity like if i want to use my playstation 3 controller i can just connect it and you can see how many time it has connected and disconnected and i got like five different controllers that i use to play that bomb squad game with my friends and that's really fun and right now you can see i'm using a gtx 670 uh 4gb overclock model for my displays and i'm using three displays uh this one because it's on vga it's showing the wrong values eight by six hundred it is for 
1440 by 900 these both are same but because I'm using a VGA fair that's why and it is an Dell U2410 display and I hope that's all for your uh, to clarify every question about the basic requirements for a Hackintosh and for installation you will need a USB drive with an OS X and for to make a bootable drive and sorry to yeah, just I just forgot to mention to installing an OS X on your uh, Hackintosh you need a USB drive and the recommended size is 16 GB for El Capitan and Yosemite I don't know uh, you can use an 8 GB drive as well and if you use a USB 3.0 drive don't plug it in 3.0 the best way to go is to plug it in 2.0 USB 2.0 and after that you have to go to Tony Mac if you need any extra help they got all the guides and if you need any other help I will let you know you you can do a dual boot on your Hackintosh and I got the installer I think uh, if I have not deleted it because I was running out of the storage let me see and if you need any drivers and the GEX board I can provide you I can provide you link as well and uh, where is my Hackintosh drive let me Hackintosh oops yeah you can use Hackintosh when I'm gonna let me go Hackintosh tools I think I mean yep these are the basic Hackintosh tools you need for a Hackintosh and if you're using a Clover base which means a UF, UEFI bootloader then you will need a, you'll need a Clover configurator you need a CAX utility and to make a bootable, uh, bootable USB installer for your Hackintosh you need UniBeast uh oh Oh my day, Uni Beast. You need a Uni Beast 6.0 is the latest model. If you can get it, that's the best way to get. And it supposed your UEFI as well now. The older models of Uni Beast does not have the ability to make a boot a uh, bootloader with Clover. But the latest 6.0 and 6.0.1 got that compatibility. And uh, I think that's all for this. If you still need any further help, post a comment below. Let me know if the video helped, give it a thumbs up. If the video sucks, let me know the reason and give a thumbs up. Don't give a thumbs up without a reason because if you just give me the thumbs up, how would I know that? What a mistake I did. And I would really appreciate any comment, good or bad, but don't comment against each other and that's all thanks for watching this video hope you like hope you all liked it meet you in the very next video take care Allah Hafiz